we left off with, you know, Xena being dead, which awkward and also dark. And Gabrielle kind of ends up taking her angsty vigiling on a road trip because she has to take Xena's body to Amphipolis to be buried next to her brother, which is sad and depressing. And then these jerk faces, like, try to attack them and steal Xena's body. And it's just, like, really, really rude. And so Gabrielle is fighting off these jerk faces. And then all of a sudden, if you were me, you let out an incredibly high-pitched squeal of 14-year-old glee and start waving your hands in the air because... impromptu grief counseling, and then he goes off to have, I guess, a very awkward conversation with Hercules. Anyway, Ephany and some other Amazons who shall remain nameless come along, and Gabrielle ends up hooking up with these Amazons, not in that way, or maybe in that way, I don't know, I assume there is fanfic, basically because the rule of the internet seems to be always assume there's fanfic. Always. And apparently, Gabrielle is in line to be queen of the Amazons, which, okay, is news, but there was a moody Amazon. A moody Amazon with way too perfectly plucked eyebrows and carefully applied makeup, and this is how we know she is evil. And so we have Velasca with her moodiness and her overly plucked eyebrows plotting Amazonianly. But we do not linger because there are more guest stars! Oh my lord! Because Bruce Campbell is back, and hello, Bruce! I am very pleased to see you. Like, seriously, I think if this episode had also included Joxer, like, 14-year-old me would not have been able to handle it. 14-year-old me would have just been, like, in a dead faint on the floor, sad, and missing out on all the glory and wonder that is this episode. Because there is Autolycus out being a very tricksy cad and, like, stealing some dagger of Helios, because why the heck not? Until, until, my hand Bob, he is possessed by the yips of Xena. And it is, I don't even, I can't even describe this. If you've seen it, you've seen it. But so we hear this strange yipping, and then all of a sudden Autolycus is possessed and kind of jerking around and, you know, stealing daggers. And eventually we do actually get to see a conversation between Xena and Autolycus where she explains to him that what she needs is for him to go steal her dead body from the Amazons. Because apparently this is national treasure, but set in Greece, and I think that makes Autolycus Nicolas Cage, I don't really know. But it's an alarming mental picture. Meanwhile, there's all this tension going on in the Amazon camp because Gabrielle, you know, wants to honor Xena's actual wishes and bring her body to Amphipolis. But Ebony is kind of trying to force her into giving Xena this, like, Amazon funeral and it becomes this whole big thing. And I'm just like, really? I find that rude, Amazons. I find that rude for you to, like, force your cultural belief onto someone who wasn't actually an Amazon, but that's just me. I'm, I, I'm probably the only one who cares. I'm sorry but I care. And all of this ends up getting tied together with the idea that, yes, Gabrielle is going to accept this new phase in her life. She will become the queen of the Amazons because she is definitely getting that evil vibe from Velasca. In the midst of all of this, Autolycus, possessed by Xena, is sneaking into the Amazon camp, dressed as the hairiest Amazon of all. I mean, it is the least convincing Amazonian disguise I have ever seen. Bless you, Bruce Campbell. You are perfect. Never change a thing. And so he is off in one corner of the camp, sneak, sneak, sneaking around. And meanwhile, Gabrielle is about to get crowned the Amazon Queen, but Velasca interrupts with knives, like you do, and kind of starts a brouhaha fight. But I think at this point, Gabrielle does actually manage to become queen, and then she finds Autolycus trying to steal the body, and is just like, WTF, mate, what are you doing? You are a bad, bad person, and you should feel deeply ashamed! And bless him, Autolycus does try to explain what is actually going on here with this whole I swear I'm possessed by Xena. If you could hear her supernatural yipping, maybe you would understand. But, you know, unsurprisingly, Gabrielle does not believe him. And really, who could blame her? Because it is a bit far-fetched. Eventually, Xena does have to actually take over Autolycus' whole body because she is on a pyre, about to be burned, and, you know, that would not be helpful for returning to life. So Autolycus manages to leap on top of the coffin, attach it to Argo, and they go galloping off, 
and apparently all of this is enough to somehow instantly convince Gabrielle that, oh, I guess Autolycus was telling the truth. Okay! And so, of course, evil of Alaska manages to convince everyone that this is a sign that Gabrielle should never be queen, and then essentially gets her civil war on. And in the midst of all this running away, Zena and Gabrielle manage to find time to have a mystical green screen conversation slash kissing fest, and what? I totally thought that they were just going to play, like, subtext forever, and it was never going to come out, there was never going to be any hint that this was, like, an actual relationship, but, you know, they went there, and I just got really excited and happy. Um, and then, of course, it's interrupted by us returning to the fact that it is, in fact, Xena in Autolycus's body, in fact. In fact. I'm trying to see how many times I can say in fact in that one sentence, and it turns out it's a lot. So I guess I should take a moment to actually explain what this plan is they have to reunite Xena with body. Um, they are going to go to this Helios thingamabobber and use the dagger that Autolycus stole to open up, like, this mystic tomb and get some ambrosia, because the food of the gods will somehow manage to restore Xena to life. But just how well-planned their plan is should be, you know, taken with a grain of salt, because part of this plan is, oh, you know, this coffin is really conspicuous and it's going to really attract attention that we don't want, so here's what we should do. Let's toss it in the river and just let it float down the stream and we'll pick it up later because there's nothing suspicious about a really nice coffin just floating doo -doo 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 down the river. Um, no, no one's going to question that at all, guys. And of course, this plan does not actually go smoothly in the end, because the Amazons catch up to them at the temple, and then there is kinky color time with Autolycus and Velasca, where Velasca keeps telling him how much she likes pain. And like... Woo! This episode was pulling no punches. And the outcome of all this kinky bondage time is that Velasca gets the dagger and starts going after the Ambrosia for herself to become a god. Now, the sad thing is, this Ambrosia is not really that well protected. I mean, yes, you have to have this mystical dagger, but all you have to do to reach it once you have the dagger is just do a little vine climbing, and apparently... Everyone in Greece, like, had to rope climb in Greek gym classes. Because Velasquez just do 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 climbing up a rope, and Xena ends up taking over Gabrielle, and then, like, do 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 is, like, chasing after her, and there was big dramatic fighting, fighting on the vines. And, as you can imagine, fight, 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 fight. So they do actually manage to release the Ambrosia from its magical refrigerator, and it comes flying down and, you know, like, falls, and no one actually catches it, although it did make a little side trip down Gabrielle's front, and so there's a little bit of magical god jello that is stuck in her bra, <laughs> and I just, this sounds so weird, like, I tried to think if there was a good way to explain this, but no, no, there's really not, because Velasca gets, like, mushed under some stuff, and they think she's dead, but of course she's not, because when is anyone ever actually dead when there was convenient ambrosia lying right next to them? Whatever. But Gabrielle goes over to the body of Xena and, like, pulls out the god jello from her bra and sticks it in Xena's mouth, and yay, Xena is revived. And, you know, you kind of expect some weird stuff to happen in this show, but I feel that reviving your title character with magical god jello that you dug out of your bra at the end of the day is probably not something that I ever would have anticipated seeing. But at the end of the day, Xena's back, and there is hugging and reunions, and it is lovely, and there are feelings, and I don't really know how this is all going to work out with Xena being back and Gabrielle now having to go be queen, except there is that whole civil war thing, but now Velasca's probably going to go make herself a goddess, and I, I'm pretty sure this is not going to end well. But, you know, for today, it's a darn happy ending, and let's all just be thankful. Zena's body was not harmed during the production of this motion picture. However, it took weeks for Autolycus to get his swagger back. Addendum to the addendum! In what way does Autolycus need to recover his swagger back after being possessed by Zena? I think that would add to your swagger infinitely. Disagree! Disagree with the disclaimer. Bam!